All right, I wanted to just introduce everybody to Chuck Jones. Chuck is the president of local 1199 of the Steelworkers, and Chuck has been in the middle of the fight to make sure uh, that United Technologies does not shut down two plants here in Indiana that will cost 2,100 good paying jobs. And I want to thank Chuck for all of the effort that he has made fighting for these workers now and in the past. But here is the point. As a nation, we have got to end the absurdity of seeing plants that are profitable, where workers are productive, where the quality of their work is not in dispute. Companies are making good profits off of these plants here in Indiana. But just because you can pay a worker in Monterey, Mexico, $3 an hour, and just because a couple of years ago you can give a severance package for your former CEO of $171 million. You know, this is the type of greed that in fact is destroying the middle class of this country. You can't give a former CEO $171 million in a severance package and then tell workers here in Indiana that there is not enough money to maintain their jobs when in fact the company continues to make money right here. Uh, Chuck, did you want to say a few words? Yeah, a couple of things. Really appreciate Senator Sanders standing up for working people uh, throughout the country. He's the only one that's been a champion of our cause for a number of years. And his, his uh, situation on trade hasn't changed one iota. Uh, we got unfair trade legislation, corporate greed, which is causing these 1,400 people to possibly soon be unemployed. Did you want to, one second, can we stay on this issue for one second? It's about trade. Yeah, okay. Um, in Michigan, you were very, very heavy on trade. Right. Uh, you've been very heavy on trade here yeah. in Indiana. Do you think that issue is going to help you get to voters here? Well, I think it will. I, I think, as, as Chuck just said, it is very hard for people to understand why profitable corporations that have given a $171 million severance package to a former CEO are shutting down plants in Indiana and all over this country. It's not just Indiana. What we have seen over the last 35 years are tens of thousands of corporations who are saying, yeah, we're making money in America, but I don't really care about the workers here. I'm going to shut down the plant and we're going to move to Mexico. We're going to pay people there 34 bucks an hour. We're going to make even more money. That type of corporate greed is in fact destroying the middle class of this country. And I think people all over this country are saying, you know what, that cannot continue. We need a trade policy which works for the middle class and working families and not just for the CEOs of large multinational so, corporations. Do you, do you think having another debate with Secretary Clinton maybe focused on trade? Is that that I think that would be great focused? because I think clearly one of the differences in this campaign is that I have throughout my congressional career, way back in the early 1990s, uh, understood that these trade agreements, whether it's NAFTA or permanent normal trade relations with China, were a disaster for American workers. I understood that. I fought them. I was out on picket lines with workers in opposition to NAFTA. Secretary Clinton, as you know, has supported virtually every one of these disastrous trade agreements. And that is an area of strong disagreement that the voters of Indiana and America will have to uh, consider, I think. It's also an area where you have a lot of overlap with Donald Trump. Do you imagine working with him in the future no, on this issue? No. no, I think, you know, Donald Trump lives in his own world. I think uh, he is here, you know, taking, picking up on an issue which, from a political point of view, is a popular issue. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, if you want somebody who has stood with working people his entire political career, uh, not only in an effort to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, Mr. Trump, I think, uh, thinks that a $7.25 an hour federal minimum wage is, is just fine. Uh, I think if the workers of this country want a candidate who has stood with them, uh, who will uh, transform our trade policies? I think Bernie Sanders is that candidate. I agree. Senator, do you feel that your attention to this uh, particular issue in Indiana has moved the needle at all in technology? Well, Danny, I will tell you the answer to that in about 10 hours. I'll give you very specific information. No, but I mean actually in the company Look, moving to Mexico. Oh, well, I think, you know, and let me tell, let me be very clear and, and tell United Technology uh, and tell Carrier, uh, and te United Technology owns Carrier, uh, that if they think they're going to simply destroy 
uh, the lives of 2,100 people in Chuck. As I understand it, many of these workers have been there for decades. They've got whole families. Uh, the plant we represent is carrier facility on the west side of Indianapolis. 1,400 people been there since the early 1950s. Uh, very profitable. Uh, second, third, in some instances, fourth generations have came through there. We've got people, one of our officers, Vicki Burris, she got nine family members that, live, that work there. A lot of people have got husbands and wives. Doing away with their job isn't just one livelihood, it's multiples. All right, and, and if United Technology thinks that they're going to do this, they're going to cause this much pain to so many families, uh, and they're going to get away with this with impunity, uh, they are wrong. Uh, some of us, and I for sure, uh, will be taking this issue up and saying it uh, very loudly and clearly that when you have a company that gets $6 billion in defense contracts from the taxpayers of this country and then throws workers out on the street, you know what, we may want to rethink those defense contracts. So I'm going to tell United Technology, you know, you're not going to get away with this. You're not going to destroy lives with impunity. You're not going to give your C, former CEO $171 million severance package and destroy 2,100 lives and families here in Indiana and think, oh, no problem. We're not going to pay a price for that. You are going to pay a price for that. We have got to change, and this has been the theme of this campaign, corporate culture in America. This is not the case of a company that is losing money, that is desperate. They are making good profits. This is not a case where anyone thinks that these workers are not productive and highly efficient workers. The company acknowledges that. It is simply greed. They can make more money moving to Mexico, paying people their three bucks an hour. It is not acceptable. And I don't think Chuck and I are the only people in America who think it is not acceptable. Millions of people think this is wrong. And we are going to take a United Technology on. And I hope very much that they have the courage to rethink what they did. They will look pretty good. I think it'll be good for their business to say, you know what? You know, we made a mistake. And we're going to keep these jobs here in Indiana. Senator, they agreed to pay back some of the local tax incentives that they received after the announcement yeah. of the jobs would leave. Do you think it should be taken a step further as you're suggesting that they should be penalized in some way? I think that the taxpayers of this country do not feel pretty good, do not feel good about awarding defense, profitable defense contracts to a company uh, that is in the business of destroying thousands of lives. Uh, and I think that should be taken into consideration uh, when the federal government uh, awards contracts. Short term, what can be done for this family? I think we're going to put pressure, I'll let Chuck answer that, but you know, I think we're going to put pressure on them every way that we can and say, listen, uh, you want six billion, you got six billion dollars uh, in defense contracts, well, you know what, some of us are going to do our best to make sure you don't get those contracts unless you sit down with this union and you keep jobs uh, here in Indiana. And by the way, let me repeat this. I know I'm here in Indiana, I know today's election day here. But this is my view in 50 states in this country. We're seeing this in my state of Vermont. We've seen the same thing. Chuck, did you want to add anything? Yeah, you know, we're not giving up the fight. We're going to do everything we, we possibly can with Senator Sanders' help, with Joe Donnelly's help, and others try to keep the fight going on try to get Carrier to reconsider this move uh, and uh, hopefully in the end they'll feel like that uh, with the pressure everything uh, is being done on the military part of it and the possible customer loss that they might reconsider and keep these jobs. And that's what going yeah, all right, let me just pick up on Chuck's last point. You know, I assume that United Technology wants to sell their products. They want to sell their products in the United States of America. Uh, but the word will get out about the greed of this company. Uh, and uh, we will get that out to customers all over the United States of America uh, if uh, United Technology does not reconsider. We think we will have an impact on their sales. So if they're worried about saving a few million dollars by moving to Mexico, they better worry about losing many millions of dollars in sales by doing the United States. Okay, Could thank you, you all very much. Thanks, everybody. Okay.